Mm. All right, let's go. I'm going to introduce you to my wife right now. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Go ahead. Yes, um, good evening to all out there, all our listeners, those who are listening to us via phone, com their computer, or via the radio. Last Sunday, our topic was dealing with guilt, and um, we stayed on this, I think, for like um, two Sundays. And um, what we said there, we said, well, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, he forgives us from all our sins, and we should not let the enemy tell us different. So, you know, when you accept him, the things that you have done, the things that God, I was not pleasing to God, that you did in the past, is the past and you're moving forward and you try your best not to do it again but you have been forgiven however this evening our topic is forgiveness and i hope those of you who are listening and you notice i did not say hear i said listening because it is more important to listen than to just hear because if you listened you will retain all or some of the things that you hear Okay, we're going to go straight to our topic, and it's what does the Bible say about forgiveness? Forgiveness in the Bible is a permanent theme, which means it's a very important theme. Yet, it's not uncommon for Christians to have questions about forgiveness. The act of forgiving does not come easy for most of us. Our natural instinct is to recoil in self-protection when we've been injured. We don't naturally overflow with mercy, grace, and understanding when we've been wronged. Is forgiveness a conscious choice, a physical act involving the will, or is it the feeling, an emotional state of being? The Bible offers insight and answers to these and many more questions about forgiveness. We'll take a look at the most frequently asked questions and find out what scripture says about forgiveness. Is forgiveness a conscious choice or an emotional state? I believe forgiveness is a choice we make through a decision of our will motivated by our obedience to God and is command to forgive. The Bible instructs us to forgive as the Lord forgive us. Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgive you, forgave you. How do we forgive when we don't feel like it? How do we translate the decision to forgive into a chance or... A, let me take that back. How do we translate the decision to forgive into a change of heart? We forgive by faith out of obedience. Since forgiveness goes against our nature, we must forgive by faith. Whether we feel like it or not, we must trust God to do the work in us that needs to be done so that forgiveness will be complete. I believe God honors our commitment to obey him and our desire to please him when we choose to forgive. He completes the work in his time. We must continue to forgive, which is our job by faith, until the work of forgiveness, which is the Lord's job, is done in our hearts. Philippians 1, 6 says, And I am certain that God, who began the work within us, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. How will we know if we have truly forgiven? Louis B. Simders wrote in his book, Forgive and forget. When you release the wrongdoer from the wrong, you cut a malignant tumor out of your inner life. You set a prisoner free. But you discover that the real prisoner was yourself. We will know 
That work of forgiveness is complete when we experience the freedom that comes as a result. We are the ones who suffer most when we choose not to forgive. When we do forgive, the Lord sets our heart free from the anger, bitterness, resentment, and hurt that previously imprisoned us. Most times, however, forgiveness is a slow process. Matthew 18, 21 to 22 says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. This answer by Jesus makes it clear that forgiveness is not easy for us. It's not a one-time choice, and then we automatically live in a state of forgiveness. Forgiveness may require a lifetime of forgiving, but it is important to the Lord. We must continue forgiving until the matter is settled in our heart. One may ask, what if the person we need to forgive is not a believer? I have found that prayer is one of the best ways to break down the walls of unforgiveness in my heart. When I begin to pray for the person who has wronged me, God gives me a new eyes to see and a new heart to care for that person. As I pray, I start to see that person as God sees them. And I realized that he or she is precious to the Lord. I also see myself in a new light, just as guilty of, of sin and failure as the other person. I too am in need of forgiveness. If God did not withhold his forgiveness from me, why should I withhold my forgiveness from other? It is okay to feel anger and want justice and want justice for the person we need to forgive. This question presents another reason to pray for the person we need to forgive. We can pray for God to deal with the injustice, for God to judge the person's life, and then we can leave that prayer at the altar. We no longer have to carry the anger. Although it is normal for us to feel anger towards sins and injustice, it is not our job to judge the other person in their sins. Luke 6, 37 says, Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. One may ask, why must we forgive? The best reason to forgive is because Jesus commanded us to forgive. We learn from scripture, if we don't forgive, neither will we be forgiven. Matthew 6, 14 to 16 says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men the sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Do you want not to be forgiven? We also forgive so that our prayers will not be hindered. Mark 11.25 says, And when you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. In summary and in closing, we forgive out of obedience to the Lord. It is a choice, a decision we make. However, as we do this forgiving, we discover the command is in place for our own good. And we receive the reward of forgiveness, which is freedom. Who does not like freedom? If you like freedom, brothers and sisters, forgive. Thank you very much for listening. You have a blessed night and a blessed week. Oh, wow. So my sister, I mean, you know, reading this, it all sung all hunky-dory and sung like, you know, is it that easy and that practical to, to forgive 
you know, as the Bible said, is it that easy? What has been your experience with forgiveness? Well, the thing about it is, um, we, a lot of times we hear, like I said, um, that forgiveness is not that easy. Forgiveness is not that easy to forgive because we look at it as, okay, this person hurt me, why should I forgive that person? But like, you know, it's not me saying it, the Bible says it. This is the word of the Bible, which is from God. In order for you to be forgiven from God, you have to forgive. And that's what I am pressing on. If I want God to forgive me, I have to forgive others. So for this reason, I forgive people because I want to be forgiven. All right, so we still come back to the practical question which I initially asked you. You personally, what has been your personal experience with forgiveness? The same thing that you're talking about, how is it for you to practice it in the natural? How have you experienced it? Well, I'm going to answer this straight up. You know, the fruits of the Spirit, if we, are, Jesus Christ is in us, and then we cannot forgive, he is not in us. Now, I am answering for myself, Christ is in me. I have accepted him as my personal Lord and Savior. So for that reason, I forgive people because this fruit is in me. Christ is in me. So if you feel, if you're hearing my voice today and you feel that you cannot forgive and it is easy to say but not easy to be done, I'm going to tell you, you do not have Christ in you. And that's my answer. All right, well, that still turned out to be a statement that you are making a remark based on the context in the Bible. I'm asking you practically in your experience in life. When have you done it? How often do you do it? And how does it feel to forgive? Are you practicing the same principle that you are talking about? And I give, us am. A, give us a reference as to your... your I your, am uh, practicing it. Mm -hmm. And as my husband, I'm sure you, you know me more than people who see me know me. And I am a person that, because of the love that is in me and the God that is in me, when a person do wrong to me, I do not hold anything, when I said nothing at all against the person. I will tell you in an instant, after you did what you did to me, I will tell you that I didn't like it or it wasn't a nice thing to do. But in that instant, I will tell you I love you. And if there's anything I have to do for you, I will do it for you. And this is, I'm just talking for me. Amen, amen. Well, I said that to get you to a place where I could really just probably admit that. I even found it kind of strange, even with you, I was just thinking, eh. Hey, we just had a big argument and she just come and telling me something oh look at this and just going on like if nothing never happened while i'm still going on in my mind i'm just still thinking well we just have an argument i just i find that was a unique quality about you though i mean <laughs> i mean <laughs> if that's the way it's supposed to work when well, i pray to god to give me all that and a double portion of that that you're operating in because I'm just saying this on the radio to people. I've seen that many times we have little arguments or we have, you know, big arguments. You know, we, we, you know, we have our arguments and stuff like that. And then I be thinking about it and just well, like, okay, we're not talking right now or whatever it is. And in two seconds, she just say, oh, um, check this out. Come and see this. Oh, look at that. Wow, look at this. You know, like, I'm just thinking, didn't we just have an argument? Didn't we just have a, so I mean, you're not, you're not lying, it's the truth. It's the truth because you know what, I understand what the Bible says about forgiving. And if I have, if I want God to forgive me, because I want to go to heaven. I do not want to stay out there, out here. I don't want to go to hell. And if that is something that is going to take me to heaven, I will go to heaven because I forgive and I forget so I, I so so you telling me that is an is an effort that you make it's a a, a a deliberate effort that you make based on the bible to forgive or is it something that just happened naturally in you that it happens like that well we could put it both ways it might be natural in me but mm -hmm. that's what the bible says and if i'm a christian i want to be christ-like and this is what christ says this is what god says to do to forgive each other as he forgives us so i have no choice than to forgive because i want to be forgiven amen amen that's that's really that's well put right there and we hope that you know this could be some kind of 
thing that we can practice. Somebody on the, on the telephone, let me answer the phone and see what it is. Alright, well the phone was not initially open for response, but someone called and felt they wanted to share a little bit. So go, let's go ahead. Go ahead, call your life. Yes, because thank God that she has come to that place and she, um, of forgiveness, because that is one power that is, I, I call it a principality that is tearing God's people forgiveness. But I don't know. She, your wife just said something about maybe it's in her. If it's in her, praise the Lord. But forgiveness is an act of you have to say to, it's a choice to forgive. Because we're human, the thing will come before you, but you choose to forgive. Amen. And then, because if you do not forgive, it's like a cancer. It eats you alive. And Another thing, sometimes we say to ourselves, we forgive people, we forgive people. I'm talking from personal experience, things that people have done to me. And I went before God and I prayed and I prayed. But I found myself crying when I'm sharing the event. And then one person said to me, you know you haven't forgiven? I said, yes, I have. And then he said, no, because... When you are relating the story, you are crying. It means there's hurt and bitterness in there. You haven't forgiven. I said, oh, I didn't know that. So then I had to go back to God. It's a process. But the thing is, you have to desire to want, wanting to forgive. And then God takes you to that process. Praise the Lord. And I am telling you, when a person can come to that place, it's a great freedom. It is a great freedom because it's mm. not easy to do. But the first step is wanting, and then the Lord will help you. And then that particular person, I went back to God. And God, it's funny, God used another individual to let me know what this thing this person did to you. They didn't know any better. So I had to go before God and ask forgiveness for that person. And then it's gone. Praise the Lord. So I know where <laughs> you, what your wife is talking about. Amen. God bless her. So thank, uh, thank, thank you, you for what you call and, and, and said. Like I said, this is something I noticed with her. She's not saying it just because she's on the radio trying to impress anybody. Yes. But I noticed that uh -huh. as my wife, you know, you know, sometimes we have a little argument about something. And then I'm sitting there and, or I'm driving or whatever. Or I'm home and I'm just like, well, you know, you know, we just had an argument. And then she would just come nice and casual and say, oh, I just make something, you know, you want something like normal, 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 like just like if nothing never happened. And I'm just thinking, what kind of person is this? <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, either God made her like, like that or I remembered hearing her telling a story about, I believe, a family member, what happened. Yes. Yeah, Maybe her that process, that process because I think she wasn't always this way, if, correct me if I'm right. Yes. But um, whatever, happened, whatever happened to her, she had to go through that process because she desired it. And then the Lord delivered her. Because sometimes we say to God, I don't want something, but God knows us. Deep down it's not true. But when you really want Deli to be delivered from something, God deliver you. And I think it's an anointing to forgive the way she did and for her to talk that way. And then you living with her, you know, my sister, God bless you. And I pray, I, I'm asking you to pray for people that God will put them in that place, so that anointing that is on your life. When you come, when you meet people, as you talk into them, that virtue can be transferred to people because when you're in that place of unforgiveness, when you meet people and you have that rage inside of you, it will kill yes, you. Yes, and in a is. lot of diseases uh -huh. that people have, 
It's because of unforgiveness. Because whenever you, that feeling of um, anger rise up inside of you, even if you don't react, what happened? You sent out toxic um, chemical in your bloodstream. Wow. And this is the root cause of cancer, diabetes, a whole, a whole sort of wow. illness that's killing it's people out there. And when God asks us to do something, it's not for a joke. It's something about fornication. When God said, do not fornicate, my God, people look at you like, hey, you, who, is, who do you think? Oh, God, I'm taking too much time, right? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, what do you, you know, it, you, it, you know. Yes, it's like, it's like fornication and, and, and people looking at you and say, what do you mean? You're not fornicating. You know, they don't know. God is saving a marriage. God is saving uh, um, a family because when you do that thing, my God, it's a tree. It is a tree, and then it visits, and it visits, it visits generation to generation. Whatever God asks you to do, my sister, it's let me, not a joke. Amen. It's but let me, let me do, I got somebody, we got somebody else on the other line, and the, our okay. time is almost right. expired, so let me okay. thank you for your contribution. All right, go ahead, baby. Um, no, I just want to say to her that, you know, I'm happy that um, you guys are really listening. And um, it was a situation that with my um, twin sister, she used to beat me up all the time and I did not know what to do. I used to cry for her all the time, but yet still I loved her. I really loved her. And no matter what she did to me, and I came to a point in my life that I just did not want her to touch me. But I went to God because I love my family. I'm a family-oriented person. And then God and did then it for God. me, and today I am free. I forgive because people. Because I'm on the line. Call her, go ahead, your life. <laughs> Double look, good afternoon. You and Mrs. Shrika, you guys are going to make me late for my service. Don't with this be late, conversation. Go ahead. But listen, Double O, your wife is 100% correct. You ask what kind of person is she? She is a woman of God. Forgiveness is a practice. Like she says, it's something that you have to practice. Like riding a bicycle, uh -huh. it is not easy because we are all humans. But like your wife said, if you do not have Christ in you, then you cannot say you, you're forgiven and you're forgetting. Forgiveness is a practice. And if you want to reap the blessings and the goodness of the Lord, forgive. It is a practice. Like I said, it's not easy. It's not easy. But if we practice it every day, you guys will continue to have your little disagreements. Five minutes and two minutes later, it's like it never happened. That is a Christ-like woman. God bless you guys. Thank, All you. Right, thank you for the call, my sister. Okay, bye-bye. Indeed. Indeed. Any, any final comments? We have one more call on the line. Call us back for a fast caller if you want to get a piece of this right here. Seven minutes before the top of the hour, we got our brother coming up next with Back to the Bible Way. The man from out of New Guinea. I'm joking, man. It's from Ghana. Go ahead, baby. Go good ahead, call it your life. Good evening. Please turn off your radio. Good afternoon. Please turn off your radio, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, my sister. What I'm saying, forgiveness is something that we have to do once we are a Christian. But what is the reality is that sometimes we have memories of things that we're supposed to forgive and we have the memories. What I'm saying is that memories does stay with you until it fade away. And when it fade away, sometimes when it comes back to you, some people have to remind you, and you forget it. But you have to forgive as a Christian. That is the Amen. action. You have Amen. to take that action and put that in place. But the memory sometimes linger with you until it fade away. So this is my contribution. And I am saying the reality is that memory sometimes stay with you until it fade away. Sometimes some don't, don't even fade away. But because you have to forgive, you do what is right, forgiving and talking with the person, apologizing to the person, bringing up the situation and, and then saying, I forgive you, but then it may linger with you until it really moves itself away from your memory. This is my contribution. Amen, my sister, in Jesus' name. Six more yeah. minutes to the top of the hour. <clears throat> All right, so it's so definitely it's it's something that as, as you spoke about it, you know the Bible requires us to to, to forgive. forgive, and it's something that we have to strive to do. But what I wanted to really get at to the point is, 
those things might look like it's so hard to do because we're looking back into the world because when we was in the world not forgiving is something that was kind of practical or everyday thing for us to, to us is like you, you if you don't forgive somebody like you, you're bad and you're strong and you whatever and you're not a soft e or whatever it is but the alternative side of it is in in the kingdom of of light forgiving is is a, is a glorious thing it is because it is one of the things that are important not just one but it's an important thing for us to do very important because if you're gonna renew yourself as in um getting to know christ accepting him as your personal lord and savior that is one of the criteria that you have to forgive <clears throat> for him to forgive you amen because that's what the bible says forgive as our father in heaven forgives us so if you don't forgive and that is the thing we have to really look on if you don't forgive you will not be forgiven god will not forgive you so what's the best thing to do forgive amen amen i guess we're going to continue that a little bit later on next week god's willing or sometime we're going to continue because it's it's um from time to time like i said those important things we have to raise them from time to time to reawaken you know people just reawake them we're just gonna tap them and wake them back up because many things we have gotten comfortable with it even if it's not good but we have gotten comfortable in that kind of way and i mentioned something to the essence of um there are some people who are comfortable to stay in a certain religion because of certain things that they accept in it you know a person gonna say well okay i could just well, go and jump up in the party and i go to the past i go in a little boat say that i'm sorry for it while i'm planning to go and do it next year again so i'm not going to no church where they're making me feel guilty about it and making me feel it's a sin i'd rather to stay here because here yeah, nobody tell me it's wrong nobody tell me it's a sin nobody tell me what you're, you're, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, because baby. they like their mess <laughs> people don't want to come out on certain things that is not good which they know the bible talk about that is not good the reason they're staying is because they like the mess it's straight up they like the mess. Mm, well, that's, that's kind of raw when you're raw than me then. Yeah, but, um, but the reality is reality. And, you know, our, our duty is to try to help us be stronger. Help us see that God is not a liar. Help us see God, God, is, God is truth. And God is, God, is, God is righteous and God is holy. And God, whatever you want from God, he could grant it to you. But there are certain criteria that is very important and dear to him. Dear to his heart, which is forgiveness. Is, 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 is like, that's the pinnacle of, of Jesus Christ. Forgiveness, period. He don't care what happened. He don't care what it is. Just forgive. And the, the bigger thing about forgiveness is that it might look hard to do but once you exercise it you get such a glow with it with christ god you. make you know that look i really appreciate what you did so i will encourage anybody go ahead try it do it jesus love you in the name of jesus so we guys we thank you this evening once again all the callers who call and participated and most of all we thank all the listeners who listen to choice radio keep praying for us that we'll be able to come here day after day and lift up the name of jesus that jesus will be you know seen in in, in the light he should be seen and he, you know his name will be praised and we are going to get stronger as believers in the body of christ that god gonna know i have a separated group of people down there in brooklyn or in new york or wherever that is just taking me to a new level all right so we love you guys good night up next is the man from ghana back to the bible way we love you in the name of jesus